Hi, I'm Dakota Crow. I'm the executive director here at the Boys and Girls Club. The Boys and Girls Club is unique to the Muskegon community. It's a year-round program that services youth ages 6 to 18. Um, we have a specific mission of inspiring and enabling all youth in the Muskegon area to become basically the best kids that they can be and the best youth that they can be. Um, we keep it pretty simple here at the club, to be honest with you. There's three outcome areas that we have, academic success, good character and leadership, and then we have an emphasis on health lifestyle, which brings us here today. Um, and everything that we do really starts with the staff and the programs that we get to run each and every day. So obviously as the club gets rolling and grows, there's always a need for volunteers, donors, and uh, general interest. You can reach us at bgclubmuskegon.com or give us a call here at our offices. Uh, number is 231-798-5048, and any of us standing here can help you out. Hello, my name is TJ Chappelle. I am the support director here at the Muskegon Boys and Girls Club. Um, my responsibilities include injecting energy into our club and making sure the environment is safe and fun for the members as they walk through the door. I am also responsible for the teen outlook, uh, making sure the teen are are engaged in the community and are in, on the right path for success beyond high school and in life in general. My name is Carmela Elam. I'm the program director here at the Boys and Girls Club. And my overall responsibilities is to create and design and implement outstanding programs to help our youth be successful in life. We have a program uh, called Power Hour where we help our kids with education. We have a passport to manhood, smart girls, smart moves, and also we do a lot of um, extracurricular activities, including one of our outstanding programs called Triple Play where we do a lot of activities where we play soccer, football, basketball, anything to keep our kids healthy, active, and, uh, and doing better in life is what our goals are and what we strive to do every day is give our kids a quality life and a chance that they can make it and dream big and do all the good things and come back and be a part of this community and make it a success that we want it to be. Our hours of operation for the summer are 12 to 6. We have activities starting at 12 and we end every day at 6. We provide lunch and dinner for all our participants as well as fun activities throughout the day and education as well. The cost to join is $5 and that's for the entire year. We are, um, we are sponsoring ages ages to 6 to 18. They can come and join and be a part of this wonderful program. You know, and to follow up on what we really do here on a specific, you know, we can tell the stories. Um, there's a few specifics. There's a program we run called Summer Brain Gain. Basically, it's a summer reading loss, uh, learning prevention loss program that we get to focus in on. So basically, you've got two months where the children don't have the chance to go to any schools. Summer school, they're usually at home sitting on the couch, that story. Um, through Summer Brain Game, we've actually had the opportunity to reach about 30 kids that were underperforming um, in literacy and reading and really help them achieve and start to get them on another level. So that way, whenever they go into the school year, um, they're better equipped to, uh, to go into that school year. And a lot of those things have just been on community partnerships and engagement. Um, the board that got this uh, group together, a group of dynamic individuals in the community that really want to see this not just succeed for the year, um, but very sustainable. Um, and in our community partners, it's, it's been very cool to see what we've been able to develop um, just across the board with community partners in the health area, health arena, not only that, but the academic arena, and uh, obviously Muskegon Public Schools letting us uh, get to use this facility um, to help impact their youth has been huge. So there's so many great people doing so many great things in the Muskegon community and, and the entire county. It's just nice to uh, get to complement those efforts. So really we've done some unique things as far as just outside of the box kind of thinking and programming and really trying to get a really good picture of um, the community that we're working with, the kids that we're working with. Um, and you know there's been always the talks of health screenings and different things and that is something that we get the chance to do with our kids. Um, at a national and state level we've actually paired up with Henry Ford Health Clinic. Um, and a couple weeks back we had our first Be Fit Health Festival um, where there was actually where we're sitting right here there was a uh, health unit that came in. Um, a group of nurses, doctors came in and did those health screens for all of our kids. 84 health screenings is what we got the chance to uh, dive into that day and they'll be coming back in October um, and hope more folks in the community can come out for that. It's not only just for our kids though, it's for every kid in the community under the age of 18 and then to really get a good grasp on the entire scope of the family we also service folks ages 55 plus just in the health screenings. Um, and there are some really unique programs that we offer um, around the family side of things too called Family Plus um, that really try to really help the family, you know, not just in the club, but how we can basically, you know, get a full picture on being the best folks that we can be for, for those kids and those families. So, you know, the club, it's, it's very unique in the sense, you know, we're a little bit different than uh, maybe, you know, you always look for that differentiating factor. Um, for each one of these kids to come for the entire year, um, it's a $5 fee. 
Um, basically, that breaks down the barrier of cost payment for kids to get into the program, which really invites everyone in the community. And even on top of that, we have scholarships. So obviously, you know, having all these kids here does have a significant cost. And there was a group of individuals that, you know, they did get us here and they did raise the founding campaign, but it is an annual campaign that keeps us moving and driving. Um, donations is what we thrive on and what we, what we live off of and the programs that we've discussed here today. Um, you know, that's what it costs to get these kids, you know, to the next level. And really, it's not about just in the moment of helping the kids you know just get get the better grades what we're really designing here and developing we're developing a better Muskegon um, you know we're looking in 15 years down the road and these are the kids that are going to be running your town and it's really cool to think about you know the folks that uh, taking a kid from maybe they didn't have the chance to to know how to read or no one gave them that chance and we get the chance to empower them on a deeper level um, and you know back to the partnerships the schools got them from 7 30 in the morning until 3 30 at night the cool thing is we get to open our doors at you know 3 30 4 o'clock and we've got these kids until 8 o'clock of an evening. So you really get the chance to be there for the kids throughout the day. And within that time, um, you know, the schools gets the chance to really dive into the academics. And then we get to help them more on a social, personal, and overall development level. Um, you know, that really starts to have a lot of great benefits on, you know, not only, you know, second and higher education, kids going to college um, that might not have before. Um, you've got kids going into trade schools, going into the workforce better prepared. Um, you know, we've got junior staff here that we're cultivating into, you know, their next positions. And, you know, we understand that that's going to make a better Muskegon. So basically, whenever you give a donation to the club, you really are investing right back into Muskegon. Hi, I'm Devon Kitchen and uh, with the Muskegon Boys and Girls Club and what we're doing today is a hygiene drive where we're collecting uh, all types of hygiene products from soap to toothpaste and toothbrush. Uh, we're doing this from 1 to 5 p.m. at uh, 550 West Grand Avenue. Uh, this project is to give back to our community and give back to the kids and our club as well. This is uh, We're going to be giving out what we call pH kits to community uh, people community uh, neighbors that need the products who can just come in and ask even if they're not members of the Boys and Girls Club where when school starts back up if the kids need to come down and get it they can come uh, do it uh, come grab it as well this is an annual project that we'll do we accept products every day and we'll give them out today as well the Health Hut, located at 3112 Henry Street in Norton Shores, offers a full line of natural and organic groceries, including fresh produce and free-range hormone-free meats, eggs, cheese, and dairy, provided by local farms. Taking pride in carrying products which contain no preservatives, additives, or unhealthy fats, their wide selection of allergen-free foods can accommodate most specialty diets. From frozen desserts and entrees, to pastas, baking mixes and cereals, to soups and salad dressings, to chips, candy, and other snacks, The Health Hut, we have your good health in mind. Hi, I'm Brenda Sprader. Facing serious legal problems alone can be disappointing and stressful. When your freedom, your loved ones, or your finances are at stake, it is important to seek legal representation. I'm an experienced trial attorney and will work hard to protect what is important to you. I strive for equitable resolution and provide confidential guidance. I cannot promise specific results, but I do promise to be committed to zealously fighting to ensure that your rights are protected and that justice is served. If you would like to meet with me to discuss your legal issues, please call the number on your screen for a free consultation. Hi, I'm Brenda Harris with Nexus Realty, turning dreams into an address. I support DSE TV. So 
So it's really unique, you know, that the Boys and Girls Club is in Muskegon now. Uh, we mentioned earlier, you know, it's been 15 years in the making and here it is, but everybody, it's one of those things, it's new, it's fresh, not everybody really understands, oh, what do they do? Um, you know, what is the club? They go hang out, you know, the kids just have a bit of a, you know, chill out time, what actually happens. You know, the program's being so structured, and then from the National Boys and Girls Club of America, the resources that we have that we get to bring this community are just, it's such a great, great, great thing. Um, and we mentioned that there are three key areas that we focus in on, academic success, healthy habits, and good character and citizenship. So there's a formula where we take our key staff members, all of our youth development professionals, all of our junior staff and our leadership staff, and what we do every day, we have fun, safe and supportive atmosphere, we give the kids opportunities, we set expectations, and then we give them recognition when they achieve. Um, and you know, when you can do those things, we call those the five key elements of positive youth development. So you start with that right there, and you can use that across the board, doesn't matter if you're a grandparent, um, you know, mother, father, aunt, uncle, you can take this formula and use it at your home and it's wonderful. Um, so basically you take those elements and make it fun is the most important part. And the kids actually end up voting with their feet. You know, it's really interesting that, you know, we don't have any kind of, uh, you know, the, the kids aren't forced to come. The kids get the chance to come when they want to come. And it's really neat to see how the program's grown knowing that none of these kids are being forced to come here. Um, you know, they're all, we've, like I said, went from 30 members to about 90 members um, just in the last couple of months, which is really neat and it kind of attests to that whole club experience that we try to get to. So, um, you know, what the club's really good at doing is really leveraging that club experience and giving these kids a safe, positive, and supportive place to go every day that's consistent. Um, you know, it's not anything that just comes in the school year and then goes away. Um, it's not one of those things that just comes in the summertime and then whenever school starts, it goes by the wayside. You know, the Boys and Girls Club is really a place six to 18. If you're a kid, we've got a place for you and this is the place to be. Um, you know, and it's a year round program. It's got minimal cost, $5 for the entire year to enroll. Um, if there's any issues with that with parents, we always uh, will find some way to get a scholarship out there. You know, the kids are fed while they're here. We get the homework taken care of. During the summertime, we help on that uh, learning loss prevention, um, you know, as well as I do. I mean, you can sit around and you know, the house and, uh, you know, not read something for a while and you feel a little little duller than if you always stay sharp and read a book. You know, it's the same way with these kids. You know, you can't expect to pull somebody out of a classroom setting for two months and have them excel, you know, the first day out of school. So really what we're trying to do is create that environment where those kids can learn and feel safe in. You know, the Boys and Girls Club, uh, it's one of those things, too, that everybody's still wondering what it is. Um, a perfect example and one of the personal stories that I can share from here that just happened recently. Uh, we're running a program called Summer Brain Gain. And what it is, it's basically to, uh, you know, the su summer learning loss as kids aren't in the classroom. It's really to help, you know, maintain that learning capacity. So whenever they go back in the fall, they're ready to go. So, I mean, it's helping teachers, it's helping the families, and it's helping the students. Um, really trying to build, you know, that, that community that we help, you know, saying, you know, we can make a better Muskegon, that's what we're here to do. One of our staff members the other day, um, running summer brain gain for our kindergarten through second grade level, um, called us up on the radio and said, you know, we've got some things to work on here. Um, basically, she identified about 25 kids that were either, you know, significantly below grade, you know, learning levels and reading and literacy skills. Um, that were significantly below. So we've started targeting, and those are kids, you know, through the summertime that would have never got the chance to have a program like this. So if we weren't here, you know, 25 kids just this summer alone would go into the 2015 2016 school year already behind in literacy and reading. Um, and these were kids, you know, whenever we started, weren't exactly identifying basic alphabet letters, um, couldn't spell their names. So we've taken that transition. That's the very basics. Um, there's actually a statistic out there. Um, that the feds actually build prisons based on third grade reading levels um, and if you know how many reading levels are below you know what they would consider average um, basically they've kind of identified that to you know misbehavior and crimes and criminal crimes and juvenile system um, so basically what we've got the chance to do is catch a lot of those kids before you know third grade you know at that kind of turning point you're starting to learn math and you know math is uh, becoming more you know instead of just two plus two it's now well Johnny has five apples and Susie has two how many apples do they have together? Um, you know, if you don't know basic reading skills, you don't know how to solve that equation. So it's not that you're just terrible in math. It's just that you don't know how to formulate, you know, or even think or comprehend or read that sentence to even make the make it make sense. So what we've done is help build that overall kid throughout the summertime. And, you know, that's just on the micro level. And as a long-term goal, you know, until we can tell that story and do that a thousand times a day, 
You know, you've got thousands and thousands of kids in this community that we still have to serve. And, you know, starting out right now in Nelson, it's great. It's an awesome space. We love it. Um, but, you know, duplicating this out to the community, you know, we've got a long way to go. And until we can serve, like I said, about a thousand kids a day and help those kids, you know, be just a little bit better than they would have been, you know, instead of, you know, just graduating high school, we're going to get those kids that are going to graduate high school, they're going to go on to college or a trade school. We're going to get those kiddos that, uh, you know, might have just got uh, the bare minimum of what they thought was possible in life for a job. You know, they went through high school, went through college, and go on to get that job. And through the programs, what we have, you know, career launch, basically helping them solve their passions in life and what they really want to do. Uh, diplomas to degrees, which really is a focus on a goal setting in high school of, well, what's it going to take to get to the college that I want to get to? Um, so there's those programs like that that really take things to the next level. When you really start to talk about 15 years down the road, we're going to be developing the leaders of this community. And it's very neat to think of, um, and it's very neat to see behind us here. So, uh, you know, right behind us are our future leaders, and it's our job to help develop them every day. And until we're developing about 1,000 kids a day all across this county, um, we've got a lot of work to do. The whole community can get involved in this. Uh, we had Tom Izzo come back in the... Uh, February of this year and really give a riveting speech on how it takes an entire village and a community to make this work and he's absolutely right um, and that might be monetary it could be uh, you know donations um, you know that's important but at the same time volunteer hours and being here for these kids is very important too and you know if you're intimidated by oh my gosh there's a hundred kids a day and I don't know that I can handle that um, by no means is that what we're asking you to do you know the basics of helping a child read helping a kid with math pro programs. Um, you know, we've, we've had a very passionate volunteer that's wanted to teach the kids pickleball. If you have a passion, you have a desire, you know, and you have a hobby that you want to bring to these kids that you might think is uh, possibly, you know, a dying art, bring it to these kids and we'll make it a program. It's always great to have engaged volunteers. And really, we need the entire community with great ideas that can come in and work with our kids one-on-one. -on -one. You know, we have great staff, dedicated staff, um, we have great volunteer base started, but we always need more. Um, and just on the basis of it and the breakdown, um, you know, in a classroom base, we keep a 1 to 15 ratio in the program areas. Um, often what that'll mean basically for every 15 kids, we'll have at least one staff member there. And usually we have two staff members. But if you go back to that story of us telling, you know, there's 30 kids in a room and we've got two staff members in it, we're trying to teach 25 kids how to read and advance their literacy skills. We can't do that with just two people in those rooms. We need help and everybody can read, everybody can come out and everybody can get engaged. And it's so fulfilling at the end of the day, I always tell my friends, um, you know, if you're having a rough day, just swing by the club. And you guys can see the atmosphere. Like I said, I've already said it's fun. You've got the staff that are engaging with the kids. You've got the music, you've got the games room when you walk in. Um, you know, I mean, what kind of atmosphere does that provide whenever you get to walk in as a kid? You got somebody greeting you as you come through the door. You walk through the, and we got a nice safe door there, you know, that basically has a, you know, push button so the kids feel safe so not just anybody can walk through. But once you're that kid, you walk through, you've got the foosball games and the ping pong. Um, you know, you've got the big screen that you can sit there and interact with your kids or your friends with. You know, it's, it's where kids come to be kids. Um, and it's really the positive place is what we're building for those kids. So, you know, if you want to be part of that environment, we definitely need you. Um, you can go online to bgclubmuskegon.com. There's a volunteer page, there's a donate page. There's ways for you to get involved and we make it very easy. Facebook is very popular these days. You can hit us up on Facebook or you can simply call us. We still answer the phones, 231-798-5048. All great ways to get in contact with us. For nearly nine years, West Michigan Driving Academy has been providing Muskegon County with complete, comprehensive driver's education. Students spend time both in the classroom and on the road in a state-approved driver's education vehicle with state-certified instructors. West Michigan Driving Academy is the only school in Muskegon that offers both day and evening classes throughout the summer. Accident-free, with 150 years of combined experience, you will drive safe at West Michigan Driving Academy. The Glenside and Northside pubs, from sandwiches, burgers, and Mexican food to starters, salads, soups, and desserts, 
not to mention their specialty pizzas like Hawaiian, vegetarian, chicken alfredo, and of course their grand finale. It's the Glenside and Northside Pubs. Uh, my name's Jacob Mao. Me and my wife, Teresa Mao. Uh, we hosting two South African players here. Uh, it's been a great, wonderful experience. Uh, feel like two kids of our own, and uh, I'm very pleasured to meet. This is uh, Brogan Shrimpton. He's 23 from South Africa. He's got some stuff lined up to play for Davenport. Um, this is uh, Alexi Monroe. He's 28, also from South Africa, and uh, just. Good guys, good solid guys, and glad to meet them, glad to know them. As Jacob said, my name's Alexi. Um, they've opened their house to us. Um, like he said, we've been one of their children. They've treated us unbelievably, opened their house, and uh, we just, we could never repay them the way they've treated us, and uh, we really hope to see them in the future. It's been an unbelievable season, first year around playing for the Risers, um, and I hope they learned as much from them is what we did from, uh, from us is what we did from them. Thank you guys, we love you. Thank you. Okay, so like you said, my name is Brogan Shrimpton from South Africa, um, 23. So we came up here, we came, um, we were here for a week before uh, Jacob and Teresa opened their house for us. Um, they didn't even know who we were, what we looked like. We just rocked up at their door, kind of walked in, and ever since then, uh, it's been the greatest experience. They've they've done so much for us, not just like feeding us and everything, but they've been there for moral support. They've been to every one every one of the games, so it's just been the greatest experience. When it comes when it comes to soccer, just coming into the team has been good. Um, met a lot of guys, opened up a lot of doors for me here in America. So I'm looking forward to my my experience here. Obviously, in Muskegon, it's a small town. We've come in. Soccer wasn't really big here, so now. I feel like as a community it's got uh, better, the soccer's a lot bigger here. Um, yeah, it's just been great meeting a lot of new people, going around, being like people are spotting us when we're just out on the streets and stuff, they're asking, they know we play for the Muskegon Risers, which is great. So yeah, just loving the whole experience, loving being in this town. Living in Muskegon, like Brogan said, quiet town, but being this a first year project with, with the soccer, with football as we call it, um, we weren't expecting this turnout. The fans have been unbelievable. Family's been unbelievable. Every single game, whether it was raining, cold, everyone in the community has been so good to us, and we we just we're glad to repay them with an undefeated record here at home. My name's Fibo Ariaga. I'm from Richmond Park, Illinois. My name's Kip. I'm from Park Forest, Illinois. We actually grew up down the street from each other. Kind of weird, but uh, I play left back. I haven't played since week three. I've been injured, but uh, this guy has been here. So uh, I've been here for the last month. I play center defensive mid. I uh, appreciate the time I've had out here. Uh, Muskegon's been good to me, and I love it here. I, I hope to return next year. It was a great season. Yeah, really, I appreciate Muskegon as a total. They took us in very well, all the fans here that support us, away games even supporting us, and taking us into their houses. So, really, we've been taking really well into uh, Muskegon. I really enjoyed it, so thank you very much. As a team, we um, well, we're from different areas. We're South Africa, we have guys from Nebraska, guys from England, and as a team, we had to bind together. And it's soccer is what brings guys together. So, as a team, I don't think it was really hard to bind. It just helps when we have the community with us and keeping us connected. Some guys come in from South Africa without a car, so now the transportation and stuff like that, the city really helped us with that. So, really, just playing soccer and training every day with each other is just it's going to bind you, you know. And so we became brothers for sure. Definitely tonight, we'll be hanging out. We're all going home soon, so you know it's gonna be a, a touching moment later on tonight. Uh, yeah, we've always been promoting brothers and family throughout the entire season. We uh, all support each other. When we're down, we pick each other up, and it's just something that needs to happen on and off the field and you know, keep a positive image throughout the community. The community's been real good to us, and that's what's kept us going. Basically, the fans are what keep us going every day. I come out here and I, I love it. I see the fans out here, and they, they pick me up the most. My teammates do, but the fans pick me up the most. And the core group that we got here, just a bunch of guys that come together every day, and we love it. We play for the game of soccer. We play for each other. Like I said, brothers and family. 
Hi, my name is Matt Schmidt. I'm the president of operations at uh, the Muskegon Risers Soccer Club. We're a first-year team, uh, semi-professionally, that is uh, started in Muskegon uh, to really help facilitate social and economic change uh, in the community. There are a lot of positive um, uh, projects happening right now in different pockets of the area, people trying to really step up and improve and make the most of what Muskegon can be, uh, and we wanted to brand that. So a riser is somebody who um, believes in the potential of Muskegon uh, and is ready to challenge themselves and others to realize that. Uh, we are excited about being a part of the community uh, and have had so much momentum and success. We're actually going to be playing the first arena soccer uh, game in the LC Walker Arena on December 12th at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, right in downtown Muskegon. Uh, as many of you may know, we're also trying to leverage our position in the community to uh, develop a downtown field right next to Shoreline Inn. Uh, our focus this season has really been developing a quality product that people can get excited about, uh, and we're very confident in just continuing to grow the excitement around the team. Uh, and uh, events like the LC Walker uh, event, playing indoor soccer downtown, uh, we think will really help prove the concept of soccer uh, downtown uh, right on the, the lakefront for, uh, for everybody to enjoy and kind of come together as, as one in the community. So uh, thank you, Muskegon, for your support, all of our fans, sponsors, and, of course, our players uh, from all around the world coming out and helping us make this a uh, very successful year one. Thank you. Yeah, the, um, this first year for, for the Muskegon Risers has been fantastic. You know, my, my role, obviously, is the, the head coach when the, the first program came about. Obviously, I knew Matt Schmidt, the, the president, but for, uh, for a while I played soccer with him back in the day, and... Obviously, as soon as I heard about the, the program, obviously he asked me if I was interested in the position and definitely something that I, uh, I wanted to do. I think that uh, you know, the, the recruiting process was hard, bringing in the, the right people to, to fit my style of play, to fit the community was, was always the biggest task. And obviously looking into the grand scheme of things, the way we've been able to try and impact the community with what we've done, obviously outside of the physical soccer games and the practices, we've definitely tried to, to get back into the community give back to, to those who come in week, out, week in, week out and support us going into the school systems, running little camps that we can try and do to, to give back. You know, it's, uh, it's a lot for us to, to expect people to turn up to games if uh, they don't see us actively involved in trying to make a positive impact in their community as well. We, um, we've got a lot of local, local guys in. Um, obviously on the, on, the, on the park today we had um, Ryan Wagenmaker, um, Eric Hill, Justin Cartwright, all local, local boys grew up here, played on this field together in high school. Um, a lot of players from, from West Michigan, Joe Potter, um, Diego came in. There's a lot of, lot of guys that have really impacted the, the communities from where they came from. And I think it's good for, for the local teams to be able to see guys that have gone through their club and gone through their school systems that are, that are out here week in, week out. And it gives them the hope that they can do it. And there's a lot of players out there in this area that can step up to do it. And it's, uh, it's good for those clubs. It's good for the kids to, to see those players. One of the biggest things all year was how how much the, the community was going to back us as a first year program. We it was uh, it was a bit of an unknown, obviously, as we were going to go through it. The first game, the attendance was was unbelievable, and as we've we've gone through, it's remained consistent all year. And you know, I, I just want to say thanks to to the community for for backing us. I know that the guys appreciate we appreciate what what they bring, the opportunities that we can give back to them to, to show them how we can play and obviously get back in the communities. Like I said as well, you know, it's um, it's got to be two ways. We've got to help provide other things for, for the kids in the school systems, the communities, than them just coming to watch us play. We want to make sure that we're there when they need them, we can get them involved with camps or go and be a, a role model in schools. But um, it's been fantastic and again I just want to say thank you to from the spot of the community.